It is often believed that innovation will make you stand out, but in the field of visual effects, the formula isn't as simple as it sounds, because there is more to it than meet the eyes. As a matter of fact, we have seen many innovative software fall throughout the years. One such software is Clarice IFX, a tool that was ahead of its time, and part of numerous high-profile movies such as Godzilla, Avengers, and many other blockbusters. Unfortunately, this amazing tool no longer exists today. Not only that, but it also vanished in a mysterious fashion. So what is the secret behind this strange case of the software which was released and discontinued in obscurity? And what is the story behind its rise and fall? This video is brought to you by Vrint 3D, a great 3D scanning app that allows you to scan 3D models on the go, anytime, anywhere. So if you are a motion designer, VFX artist, archivist artist, or someone who loves to get 3D assets without having to start from scratch, take a look at Vrint 3D. Stick to the end of the video to know more about it. Just a couple of years ago, Clarice used to be recognized as an industry standard software within the landscape of Hollywood film productions. It managed to redefine the way we think as 3D and VFX artists by introducing a revolutionary workflow to improve our day-to-day -day activities. Since it is a fusion between a composition software, a 3D render engine, and an image-centric animation package, which has been designed for artists to work on their 3D scenes while simultaneously visualizing how the final image would look like and updating it in real time, which is impressive to say the least. If we read between the lines, it is essentially a layout and a dressing tool. Basically, the duty of this type of software is that it serves as a way to create digital environments and 3D shots by offering a set of features for organizing, arranging, and decorating visual scenes with props, furniture, vegetation, and other elements to create realistic or stylized settings. You know, pretty much creating assets and animations somewhere else, such as Cinema 4D, Maya, or through photogrammetry, and then importing them into Clarice to put the scene together and then render it. However, why would you want to do that? But before we get into that, probably you want to know how this fascinating software was created in the first place. The story behind Clarice started back in 1995 at a university in Montpellier, France. It was here where fate arranged a meeting between two innovative guys that go by the names of Sam Assadien and Sébastien Guichot before they went on to conquer the VFX field by founding Isotropic and then creating Clarice IFX in 2011, these guys had always worked together and spent their entire careers in the animation and visual effects industry. It was a journey that initially began by working in the sphere of graphic design for various productions and projects before the Parisian studio Durand de Bois recruited them in 2002 to participate in the special effects of the Immortal movie. Then, they eventually transitioned to developing exclusively in 2007, where they got directly involved in designing and developing production pipelines for many prestigious studios. Jump forward to 2009, the two university buddies started their journey of creating the software that would later become Clarice IFX, after they felt like other software in the market were all running out of steam. But now, in an interview that Sam gave to Motion Cafe, he highlighted how the software came to be when the industry was making the shift towards path tracing and PBR rendering. They concluded that other software architectures didn't know how to take advantage of modern hardware resources such as multi-core processors, data streaming, or even ray tracing. And they knew it was entirely possible to do and do it better by creating a new software from scratch. So after a few years, this ambition became a reality in 2012, during the first presentation at Seagraph of Clarice IFX, where the tool saw the immediate success and instantly attracted the eyes of the biggest studios on the planet, thanks to its revolutionary workflow. But the question now is, how did it do that? Clarice is a software that has many things going for it, with a rich set of efficient and powerful features. 
However, the striking force behind the software has always been the fact that, in theory, it has visually zero polygon limits and it is capable of handling scenes with millions of polygons and gigabytes of textures on regular modern workstations. But take that with a grain of salt, as it can vary depending on your hardware, of course. It also comes back with special and never seen before workflows to enhance the experience of building large environments. For example, shading layers and groups provide a solution to assign shaders to very complex scene structures automatically in no time, instead of manually assigning them to each model, which is impossible under this context. Besides, another trademark of the software is its scattering tools, which allows us to add objects like trees to our scenes very quickly. And like any other stuff, this can be driven by things like noise or masks, but the difference is that it is also non-destructive, meaning we can add more models to scatter the objects on, and it will be updated automatically. Clarice IFX is also a user-friendly software, with a highly customizable interface, and part of what makes it popular in the industry is how it takes full advantage of the Alembic files which is a popular interchangeable computer graphics format that is highly popular in the VFX industry. And basically, it can contain anything, whether it is a simulation from Maya, a procedural asset of Houdini, or whatever it is. The software will read it without any issues. Before we continue, let me take a moment and tell you about this amazing 3D scanning app. Vrin is a new user-friendly 3D scanner from Rebuilder AI. It allows you to take 3D scans anytime and anywhere, so there is no need for specialized equipment or 3D scanners anymore. This AI-powered app can achieve outstanding results with just a couple of images, which is really interesting. So if you are a fashion designer, web developer, or engineer, or maybe a motion designer, a 3D artist, or anything else in between, you can take advantage of this new powerful tool to make your life easier. Vrin 3D has an extremely easy workflow powered by object capture and their new AI algorithm, which yields awesome results in no time. They also have a robust web app where you can edit your scanned models, adjust materials with full PBR materials, render, share, and even collaborate with other people in real time. The 3D scans can also be easily optimized and exported based on the desired file size and format. And this is not even everything the app offers. There are a lot of options to customize and reshape the models into triangles or quads and even change the color and the materials of certain desired parts of the model. And finally, you can easily share or embed your 3D models into your website or online store, which can be really useful. Currently, the Vrin 3D app is available only on the iOS App Store. The Android version will be available soon. And if you are using an Android device, you can contact the designated staff for further assistance. So what are you waiting for? Click the link down in the description and try Vrin 3D today for free. Now back to the video. It also offers a preview version of the final image of the scene to visualize how it will look like. And we can also make adjustments to it while the final image is continuously updating. On top of that, there is a fast CPU-based rendering engine. But later down the road, they re released Angie, its much-anticipated hybrid CPU and GPU render engine. However, keep in mind that this is just an overview of some of the main tools because there are loads of other features that made Clarice unrivaled in its category. During the development journey, the team of Clarice went on worldwide tours, traveling continents to showcase some demos of their beloved tool to key figures within the industry. And after a few years, Isotropic managed to build strong relationships with world-leading studios like Double Negative, who used it in movies such as Godzilla, King of Monsters, or ILM for the production of the likes of Star Wars Episode 7. Clarice was massively adopted by them, and they were truly astonished by the software's capabilities. While on the other hand, it offered Isotropic's invaluable insights from real-world productions to further improve the software. And this, I think, set the stage for the software to instantly rise to the biggest heights of the CG industry. 
and to become a standard within the field and was seen in several productions such as The Hunger Games, Ant-Man and Pacific Rim to name a few. But how was it used you may ask? Without a doubt, it was by leveraging the most impressive capability of the software for handling the amount of geometry in a scene, as it could be seen in the end battle sequence in The Rise of Skywalker, which was rendered using a combination of Renderman and Clarice. But how come a software that reached this level fall from grace like that? In April of last year, it was announced that after an incredible journey that lasted more than a decade, Isotropic will start shifting to new opportunities, and all of their productions will no longer be available for purchase, including of course their main protagonist, Clarice, with their website only becoming a shadow of its former self, as it has been updated and only allows login from enterprise users. Now, software come and go, because it is a natural progression in life. However, the odd part of the story is that it just vanished, without an explanation left behind, to what could be considered a unique and a memorable software. Basically, the only thing we can do is speculate, yet, if we read between the lines, my best guess is that the business no longer made sense and they were struggling to sell licenses. I mean, their main target has always been VFX Studios, and despite its success, only a few studios were using it, with Double Negative being in the forefront of the lineup, who quickly adopted the tool and made it a core part of their pipeline. But the sad part is that based on what I have heard, even Double Negative, their biggest client, has switched to a combination of Renderman and Houdini Solaris, which put Clarice out of the picture. And I think this was a brutal hit for the sustainability of the software. Basically, we can say that that was the straw that broke the camel's back. So, I'm gonna leave it at this. Maybe you guys know other explanations. You can give us some feedback or comment down below to let us know what you think. So, I hope you found this video useful and informative. And like always, please like this video and subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.